G'day, everyone, and welcome to the Insight NBA show. Or oh, third time's a charm. How are you, Mally? That's what they say. Good, mate. Daddy's home. I love my ESPN. Maddie likes what he knows, and Maddie knows ESPN. Let's go. Look forward to an episode where we give you 10 absolutely flying top targets to target in ESPNs, courtesy of one, Mr. Mally. Daddy's home, and he's going to refer to himself in the third person possibly quite a lot. They're playing Basketball. It's time to strap in and get ready. The Insight NBA team is in the arena, bringing you the ultimate play-by-play on who's hot and who's not to help you win your leagues and dominate your mates. You're now hooping with your hosts, Matty G, Skitty, and Mally for the Insight NBA show. I sound gross for even saying this. Where does Daddy want to take us? Straight to Harden Town. <laughs> oh Jesus! There he is. Look at him. Why? Look at him. I've, I've, you, I know now. Look, I know you're a homer of James Harden, but why is he, mate? Talk me through why James Harden is one of your top guys in ESPN. Well, James Harden of the Clippers in 2025. Reminds me of a guy uh, who used to play for the Houston Rockets who was surrounded by near nothingness and he just had to do everything by himself. And his name was James Harden. And I feel like we're going to see more of the old Houston Rockets James Harden than we loathed and loved. Um, we obviously are all very aware of the changes that they've made this season. We know that Kawhi, uh, Kawhi's body is failing him, which is a shame because uh, he, he is the best player on this team as it stands 100%. today. Um, but it, with with his ailments and injuries and reoccurring uh, problems, I don't think he's going to have much of a, of a time this year. But yeah, you know, I look at him here, projections all over the place, fan tracks, 42nd, Yahoo, 13th, uh, hashtag basketball, have him at 11th, so they're pretty happy with him. But um, the ESP, uh, ESPN ADP was 39th uh, a day ago. Yeah. I'd say it's probably edging closer to something that's more sensible. But, I'll tell you, you know, right the wheels now, fall off the Clippers. He's, he's going to play differently than last season. Oh, Jesus, no. Oh Jesus! No. It's gone to four, it's gone to forty three. Oh, it's gotten God. worse. Probably what are we doing, people? Days older. Yeah, this yeah. is an older heart we we're dealing with than two days ago. Oh Jesus! Forty six point four. He's dropping down. They're ranked for him as forty three as well. So this is a guy who is is getting more of a dependable pick by the day. Yeah, and he's he's thirty five this season. Um, so he's an old man like you and I, but. It doesn't take uh, an analytical genius to realize that someone's still going to have to score. Someone's going to have to set up others to score. Someone's going to have to do pretend defense and get uh, reap the rewards of real defensive stats without having to be a great defender. And these are the things that James Harden does. Um, I'm very happy to take him uh, at the turn or not far after. We have him on insight at about 18. Um, and that's probably uh, pulled up the rankings by me. <laughs> you guys, you oh, yeah. three of you, yeah. when, when you when, more sensible sports. When you stuff up our consensus draft and you put him at number six, um, that will fuck us every time. But you haven't done that, to be fair. You, you do rate him appropriately, one would say. That's right. I've, I've tried to be sensible. So um, he's going to, as I said, he's going to do all the scoring. Um, he's played over the last season. You think about like the injury concerns with him, but uh, a little interesting fact here, when I've lined him up against the other oldies in uh, Paul George, Curry, Durant, LeBron, he played seven more games or more last season than any of those guys. Obviously, um, considerable amounts more than, uh, well, that list isn't too bad, uh, than other oldies probably off that list. But he's a guy who does play. Um, I think he loves the game. And now he's away from... Um, a lot of strip clubs and those opportunities um, <laughs> and and restaurants this, this, and whatever else that he owns in Houston. 
I don't know what I don't know what version of Los Angeles you've ever visited, but as a tourist, I have been to Los Angeles and I have definitely seen um, the many types, and I know that they definitely have boobs you can see there and not wear a lot of clothing. Someone who can also attest for that one, he's done it again. He's, he's gone in and jumped into the studio. There he is. A Maddie between three Maddies. How are you, Matrix? I saw you creeping in the studio. How are you, mate? Yeah, he good, good. I was just this. setting up for the uh, for the NBL show. Can you not I just thought I'd pop before in you come in, mate? We, we might not yeah. have been decent. Yeah. Oh, I was just well, I was just gonna lurk in the corner. No, we can't do that <laughs> because I think it's I think it's a I think it's a good time as any to give this one a bit of a pump. Then the big draft board because it's got your consensus. You've got your top one sixty eight players. It's got Mally's. It's got my top one sixty eight players, Maddie. We're talking ESPN values and James Harden. Where do you see him at the end of the day? Oh, I think that he's probably an 18 to 22. He has been on my board. I'm obviously just dropped in. I don't know where he is on ESPN's draft board. But, yeah, look, I'd be happy to take him in that 18. Oh, yeah, def definitely unders. Like, you just can't get those assists very often that late um, with that upside. And I don't care about his age, really. He's on a... He's on a team that he can pass the ball to people, get a lot of points, and, um, yeah, just do everything. Well, I'm going to kick you out here, but I'm going to ask you one thing because this is a bit of a one divider. No, I'll ask you one question. This is a guy who's divided between us, Kevin Durant. His rankings are all over the place this season, depending on where you look. I know Basketball Monster has him as 32. I know that Hashtag Basketball has him more around the 16 zone. Where does ESPN have him, Mally, currently? And, Maddie, where are you thinking he's going to fall come season end? Will you go first, Mally? Where is he on ESPN? Two days ago, they had him at 20th, which seems egregious for a guy who's spent his career, or at least the modern part of it, in the first round. And now he's getting close to being at the tail end of the second round. So, yes. Uh, he finished last season at ninth uh, when all was said and done. So the people uh, believe that he's going to drop at minimum 11 ranking spots from last year. I disagree. Um, I did that um, one with you the other day, G, and I took Sabonis mm -hmm. at 12 and KD at yep. 13. Um, yep. At the turn, I don't really care what order you take them in. Um, there are probably 12 guys I would take in front of KD, but there's not 13. So, And there's really not 15 or 16. So when he starts to get around that, and he's at the end of the second round and he's just sitting there. You're like, oh, geez, really? And the worst thing is if you're in a cash league in an average salary draft, he's actually going at 29.3 off the board in auction salary drafts on ESPN as well. So if you are in a salary draft or if you're in an auction draft setting, there's some uh, value you can creep out dollar-wise and save some cash on your uh, auction drafts by uh, picking up James Harden. I'm going to kick you out, Matty. There's, there's, there's too much Matthews. I've just got one more thing to say about auction drafts. Sometimes it's not what you Ooh. spend, it's what you Oh, and then he's dropped himself out. He's dropped it and he's left out. Poor wise man. And, and he's just done it. And then he's even... I, I didn't even give me the privilege of booting him out of the bloody studio. What a jerk. Listen to the NBL he shows. On on terms. And there's as much Brisbane Bullets content as you can bear with those blokes as well. And he'll tell us that Denzel Valentine is not still part of the league. He's probably in Europe yeah. somewhere. Uh, look, KD was our second guy off the list. This guy I am high on this season. I just want you to continue to waft the wonderful odour that is value for Jarrett Allen this season in my direction, Mally. I love Allen. If there's a centre, and if I'm in a one-centre league, and I just need one bloke to have that C title, it's not because he's a Cavalier. I love what Allen can bring, and there's value for him on ESPN currently. He's a bit of an old faithful, isn't he? He's um he's yeah. a little bit like the the love of your life, um, Tobias Harris, where you know what he's going to do night How's in and night out. Yeah, he's not flashy. Uh, we've seen what he turns up to, what kind of fits he turns Jeez. up into, where he's basically in his jammies uh, as he rolls yeah. into the uh, into the arena, and you've got to have a little bit of love and respect for that. You do. You do. And look, I, the, there was a there was a time last year, there was a point in the injury decimated Cleveland Cavaliers. And again, Mobley is not the healthiest bloke. We expect this wonderful breakout season from Evan Mobley. So we're seeing Mobley being the name that's value as being like cut down and knocked down on all the time. He's now like, depending where you rank it, but I've got Jarrett Allen 
at around the 50 mark, and I'm really happy with that. But he keeps on falling in the SPN. Yeah, like I've got him here as of two days ago at 80, um, which seems absolutely wild for a guy who finished last season at 43rd. I think it's I think he's not going to be the 43rd best player this season, especially yeah. with Mobley coming back and and playing out there next to him. But I can't, in my wildest imagination, understand how he's dropped nearly 40 points. I don't yeah. think he's got 40 points worse or been superseded by 39 other guys. Um, no way. I'd say it may be some of the downfalls of him with Kenny Atkinson at the uh, at the helm, maybe because he likes to play everybody, including the Tower Boys and uh, the mascot, who are the, who's the moon dog over at, uh, over at the Cavaliers, <laughs> might get a run just because everyone gets a touch. It could be a bit uh, of uh, a detriment, but you look at his other projections and everybody sees what you see clearly because Fantrax have him at 54, Yahoo at 45, Beer, uh, Hashtag basketball at 51. So the consensus is about the 50s, unless you're on ESPN where they've decided, forget all that and drop him 30 positions. If you can get him at 50. Well, he's now climbed up. It. Well, he's now climbed up. As of today now, he's actually been eked up to 66. So he's come back in. But the problem with this was their ADP ranking is giving him an 82.6 still. So it's actually dropped 2.2 positions. So... He was ranked down, like you said, on ESPN, and people weren't even. The, the thing is, people weren't looking for him. They were just going through their mocks or their early standard or their early league drafts and just letting this bloke fall by the wayside. And it could be a bit of a. Maybe I'm a bit curmudgeonly, and I'm like, "Oh, there's a there's a sinister plan by those young kids." <laughs> because there's got to be some fantasy managers who are sitting around draft office going, "Hello, Jarrett Allen," and just sitting yeah, there like yeah. wiggling their bloody fingers. Was I'm just going to see how far I can let you slide. And then he slides to 82.6. So if you're in an early season draft, no one's hunting for this bloke. If he's yeah. there at 65, 70, that's one more round that he's slid back that I want to jump on. I'm just going to take him. But I, I love the value there for Jared Allen. And, and you know, like he's, he, he's, yeah. a, he's the fourth name on the Cavaliers that you think of when you think Cavaliers. So he skips people's minds. But at the end of the day, he's a top 25 Field goal percentage, blocks, and rebound guy, all wrapped into one. If you need big man stats, he gives them to you. And he doesn't completely torch your field throw, free throw percentage like your Jalen Durans and those yeah. other big blokes. Uh, he's about a seven thirty, about a seven hundred and fifty shooter around that one, which is a much more passable mark than some of your other standard bigs around this zone. But there is a bit of a flush for bigs around round five. Mally, we've done a lot of mocks. We're seeing centers especially the good ones, let's say. Look, there's the first round centers, let's be honest. There's Jokic, your, your ADs, your Embiid's. And then there's like this kind of mid section, not this mid section because they're not mid, but guys like Jaron Jackson Jr. and your Evan Mobley's, his teammate, who are getting drafted higher and higher in like your 30 zones. But then coming around after people are trying to eat up those points and eat up those assists and those high, like those harder to get category and bulk numbers, it comes to the point where you just start hitting centers around 50. And Jared Allen, who I have in mind to pick up that around there, because this guy as well is another one of those guys who's dropped who like he's going off the board early. There's still value now for him because he's an assist specialist. And I know that you love him and you're grabbing this bloke wherever you can get him. And I know you mentioned him in the Yahoo show, but you're like, Maddie, I've, I've got to talk about Fred Van Fleet again. So go daddy, go. It's one of those guys too where do I want to speak about him? You know, almost very selfishly, I want people to let him go as far as they have been letting him go because he's a guy who's who's brought me much success in the past, whether it's been uh, with the Raptors or, or with now with Houston. Um, I mean, he is a guy who, I mean, I think we've allowed for his end of season ranking last year at 26 in our rankings, we've got him at 31. So we've allowed for some natural kind of, um, uh, what's the opposite of progression? I was going to say digression, but that's not it. Regression. 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 Thank you. Yes. Good to have two teachers and one brain. Um, so he, we, I think we've allowed for natural regression and for his role, for his age, for the players around him. And then they've nearly dropped another 20 on top of that, which seems uh, absolutely wild. So 
uh, yes, well, it, it's not as violent as uh, as what he was on uh, Yahoo. Actually, I think he's worse here. I've actually, I've actually no, got to share something because, like, no, I've, I've, I've got to show something because it's the most un- uncanny thing that's actually happening with Fred Van Fleet currently on. And this is like literally a live draft trends. I'm going to put this up here on the screen. This is where I've kind of, we've, I've been referencing it for us right now about like where's been going. If you have a look there at 32, it's got Chalen bloody green out of nowhere, replacing Fred Van Vliet. Fred Van Vliet isn't even coming up with the data on ESPN right now, but he has been slipping down into the 30 zone from the other day. So I think they've just scrubbed his profile. They've just scrubbed dub dub that profile. Um, and they've decided to replace him with Jalen Green as the guy, which is just bonkers crazy. Yeah, it's a big oopsie, big time oopsie. I, that's a, that someone's copy and pasted Fred Van Fleet's name somehow at a picture of, of Jalen Green in there because there's some wacky shenanigans that happen on with him on this website. Oh, he knows. He's, holy shit, they've confused the two blokes. They've got Fred Van Fleet currently ranked 77 and being drafted at 91.7 which is probably they've switched up their Fred Van Vliet's and their Jalen Greens. So if you happen to be drafting in the next 12 hours on ESPN, just go drafting Fred Van Vliet. You can find him at 77. Grab yourself a bargain at 91. So he's obviously a guy that you're trying to grab wherever you can this year. The right price, you know. Uh, I'm, And I think you can let him leave him. So he's way higher on my draft board than uh, whatever he is. You know, he's 44, 31, whatever ranking and whatever side you take him off. But I know that I can wait a little while for him. I won't wait too long because I know someone like you will be in the draft with me. And if I wait yeah. too long and you pick him up at 60, I'm doomed. Um, yep. But, it, yeah, it's about pulling the trigger at the right time, knowing where the value is, understanding that now's the time I go and strike. Because if, it, if you know, there's 11 picks between me and uh, and you and you pick him up one before me getting on that next round, I, I'd, I'd be kicking myself. This one was my one that I messaged you the other day, and I'm like, I know that you're an ESPN homer uh, through and through, but I'm like, Jesus, Mally, this one here. Jalen Johnson from the Atlanta Hawks. I don't know what's going on. Mark my words, this is a similar situation. He is currently, for some reason, ranked 114th day to day, 124th on ESPN. I cannot make this up. This is a guy who is going in pretty much every mock draft that we have done. Here it is right now, average draft position. You can see it. Clear as day right here on Yahoo, on the oh, sorry, ESPN, uh, as I get off the picture of him and put that on there. And there he is, sitting right in. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. It's the wrong one of the two. I've got so many bloody ESPN pages open at this point, but I can scroll down to that one. Um, yep. This is a I guy who was website. completely – I've broken their bloody website. This no, is a guy who's just being – and their Fred Van Vliet sorted because you keep opening pages and they can't keep up. Well, the, I'm telling you, can't figure it out. No, the veterans can't figure it out, and I, that's okay. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll put it up there. I'll, I'll present. I have so many screens, but this guy is someone who is a top fifty pick. The problem is, the data that's coming up is actually presenting the wrong guy. So, for some crazy reason, Jalen Johnson, and I'll get the live one. Here we go. It's the trends one. There he is. There you go. Look at that, Jalen Johnson, one fourteen, and being drafted at a hundred and twenty four. That is. Pure bloody insanity. I, I don't know what's going on in the matrix there. Yeah, it's the three people who've decided now's the right time of year to um to hold their draft, and they've made some critical errors. But I mean, we, we <laughs> saw what I did last year in his third season. He's coming into his fourth season now. Um, the uh, unopening has obviously clearly made itself uh, apparent. With uh, oh, you got nighttime mode there. <laughs> I, th- I think I, I think I had it moved up, and the lights just went bloody off. And the must, yeah, my ESPN must be controlling the lights as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're not. They're trying to yeah. shut you down. You fight the man, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know he he's with um, Dejounte gone. Uh, that he's going to take some of Dejounte's um, touches. He's going to take more shots uh, for a big guy. He's a pretty decent passer. The defensive statistics are nice. Uh, the free throws are ugly at times, but the the field goals aren't too bad. Uh, again, if you ignore some of his deficits, he's a, he's an extremely enticing little uh, little uh, edible bite for uh, for fantasy lovers. And so you just got to look around him, and there's so many Jalen's. 
there's just so many Jalen's you got to be hitting. You could almost just search Jalen's and add them all to your queue and just take them at the right price. Uh, yeah. There's not a lot of just that. Um, it reminds me of that oh, um, Kanye lyric, you know. I got so many aunties, we can make an auntie team. It's kind of like that with Jalen's. Like we got so many Jalen's, we can make a Jalen team. You know what? Let's do a Jalen's draft in the future. Yeah, I'm going to challenge yeah. you right now on this podcast. You and me, three v three, three Jalen's versus three Jalen's per team. Yeah, we'll call them. Ba- Let's do the Battle of the Jalen's. That'll be fun. We'll get, we'll get that one in the can yeah. very soon. Battle of the Jalen's on sure, the way. Yeah. Uh, Josh Giddy, Australia's very own. Why are you liking him, Mally? I don't like him. I don't like his haircut. Let's put it back to that picture. What haircut? What haircut? It's like someone's attacking. Yeah, it's probably not a haircut. (laughs) It's just hair. But, mate, that's atrocious. I mean, I can speak. My hairline's receding back down into my neck. But, um, yeah. I'm wearing a hat. (laughs) So, yeah, yeah, exactly right. You've you've figured it out. Look, um, ESPN had him at 111, which is, um, is distasteful. Um, last year he did on certain sites finish at 121, so I get it. Um, but there's obviously huge changes in the uh, in the wings this year. He's gone to a new team in uh, Chicago where they clearly don't care about anything, but they're going to let him do what he has to do. Um, depending on the health and attitude of uh, Levine, he could very much at different parts of the season be the number one guy on that team. Um, Vooch getting older, looking like his role might get replaced. Kobe White um, realizing that last year might have been the best of his career. Um, a, a disgruntled uh, Levine who nobody loves or wants. Um, but, uh, you know, it may be people are getting a little bit panicked about the AO Levine ball potential ball mix up and you know thinking that he might get the squeeze but they picked him up um they're pivoting love the word pivoting in a different direction now i i I feel like he's gonna have great control he looked great at the olympics um and he really um thrived as the number one guy during the olympics and i feel like a lot of that's going to flow over to the guy the guy is this season um and he's he's a triple threat guy you know what's not to love about that like you get your assists you get your rebounds you get your points he's starting to hit some threes he doesn't steal a block but you can't have everything um yep. yeah he's definitely and like i'm looking at the other projections fan tracks have him 98 yahoo at 69 classic good old australian boy and uh hashtag basketball at 77 so 111 he is a little high and if you can get him anywhere and outside of 100 you take that every day of the week and every day of next week too. This guy is the 32nd best ranked center in ESPN currently, which makes no sense because there's 30 NBA teams and he's a top 100 player. So I don't get it. Zubach, we know as well, this touches back on what James Harden, his teammate, can do. James Harden is a pick and roller. He loves guys who can attack the rim and work that every single day of the week. It helps to absolutely unlock his game a lot. This is the incumbent big man, one of these pure centers that you can get later on in drafts. And this is a guy who is currently ranked 120th in ESPN and ADP at 127, which is worse. I, I don't get it. I legitimately see the guy as a top 80 85 player like he's in that 80 85 zone 100 percent. 40 positions lower mally it's it's dumb i don't know what's going on but he's a must draft if you can get him around 100 110 even then there's value yeah and he's probably you know we obviously look at the the increase of role that harden's going to have now that um paul george is gone but zubak might be one of the biggest beneficiaries of the opening there, obviously a totally different position, you know, a small forward goes, we've got to talk about a center here, but he's going to have to be more than a role player this year. He's going to have to do a bit more scoring. He's going to have to be uh, a bit more bouncy and be a bit more of a presence on the offensive and defensive end. I think he gets slept a lot on uh, as a defensive guy because he can put up defensive stats for us uh, fantasy uh, players. Yep. And Harden likes him, and it's basically Harden's team now. So I'd say uh, that bodes really well for, for Zubak. And uh, who, who's the backup center for them now? I actually can't even tell you. I think it's Mo Bamba. 
I think Mo Bumba is their yeah. next best backup center, to be honest. Like, it's Bumba. Mace is gone and T- Tice is gone. So, Bumba yeah. it is, and well, he's much better than Bumba. Well, this is where we're talking like like three. I'm going to mix up the order a little bit because we're talking centers right now, and there just seems to be something on with centers because he's another old man center. You can just see how youthful and spry he looks in this photo. It's Al Horford. So there's this current thing going on with these centers on ESPN. We're in drafts. They've just, just been slept on entirely. 147th currently, uh, drafted at 136 is Al Horford. KP is out. I would say they'll play him lightly and have him right to make another stretch at back-to-back championships. The back-to-back schedule is decent enough. He'll rest those out. He'll take some games off. But what are we doing thinking that this guy who is a good field goal percentage guy, good free throw percentage guy, um, he can score. He can stretch the floor. He hits threes. He passes the ball. He gets a block a game. This is a top 100 player that is – almost not going draft or people are like oh shit our Hawford's on the board draft but you should have him on your radar maybe about 110 112 um some sites even have him as power forward center eligible as well and that's what i like about him over at espn he is power forward eligible so he's not just a pure center he is center power forward eligible um Hawford's a nice pickup this year can you go back to his picture you were laughing while the picture was up there. I'm not sure if it's safe, but we'll give yeah. it a go. Because he looks like he looks like the mascot for a stool softener or something like that, don't you reckon? <laughs> Every time I hear stool softener now, I just think of that toilet with the unicorn and the prince sitting on it, that, that viral ad from years ago. That's yeah, all sorry, I, I combined those two very separate thoughts for, uh, in your mind. But yes, back to... Uh, back to Horford and his um, career before stool softening ads as a basketball player. Yeah. Um, I think what you do with him is you pick him up, you play him and um, have him in your rotation for those first eight plus weeks that um, that uh, he's going to be there without Chris Ups. And then when Chris Ups comes back, you drop him. And, and, I, and I think it's it. more than that. I think we get I think we get more than eight weeks out of it. I think we get a very decent run. Yeah. Uh, I think we do see I think that we can be looking at extended absence for Chris Asplazingus in Boston. That's my gut feeling. I mean I don't I don't have any friends in Boston. I don't have hey guy, hang on, just some medical stuff here and just just pick up your fantasy drafts Horford. But it doesn't feel like they're gonna rush that process. We've seen what that even when he demands to play, we've seen what happens there. They're not gonna do that again. They're not gonna risk it. Horford is gonna get absolute plenty of burn. And there's another big man that's going to get plenty of burn and has just joined a team. Alex Caruso is also value ESPN around the same time right now because there's two OKC blokes on it. And I just chose to die on my mountain. Um, I love uh, 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 Hartenstein is 130 bloody six and he's currently ADP at 133. There must be only two or three teams like leagues that have drafted so far and no one give a shit about a possible top 50 player. It's it's obscene that he's going that late. And currently, if you're in the works of getting a draft in the next couple of weeks, this is a name you should be searching and put into your queue. Yeah, get on top of it before people wake up to themselves and some real uh, some real fantasy hardcores come on and start uh, drafting him at sensible positions. But you're right, he's, he's going to have a different role this year. He was purely... Uh, uh, a defensive presence last year who just kind of like stood around on the offensive end and watched everyone else do stuff and took some deep breath. Um, this year, you would assume that isn't going to be what he will do. I'd say he's going to have more of an offensive role, whether that um, minimizes his um, steals and blocks, which are really what were um, so enticing about him as a fantasy pickup last year. A guy that could get you over a block and over a steal a game was um, was someone that you wanted to know about. Um, but I think that he's a a, a, a teeter tarter. He's a he's a seesaw man. That when something goes down, something else comes up. And I think even though his defensive stats take a hit this year, he might be able to um, stretch the floor and try and uh, improve his three game uh, or unlock maybe more so than improve. Um, he might be able to get some more points. He's he's got some guys on that team who are going to um, demand a lot of the defense's attention, and that's going to leave him open to do some cool stuff. And uh, as a fantasy owner, you want to be around while he's doing the cool stuff. 
And I think the cool stuff as well is his passing game. Like he is also a very willing and able passer. I can't think that slipped on that he is actually one of these good-handed, multi-faceted players. He is really good with the ball in his hands. Uh, he's going to get you a blocker game. He doesn't have an a, offensively bad free throw percentage either. He's a plus 700. I like those guys instead of the guys who filter around the 600s late. And when we get around that mid zone, I think there's nothing but value for Isaiah Hartenstein at that one. Because come draft day, in the process of the next month or two, he is going to start flying up boards. But now these are targets. You literally have to scroll going like, where the, where's Hartenstein? But again, we often forget where guys are because we focus on the main dudes we want to get. Or we're looking for those sleepers. We're looking for the, we're avoiding the bust and we're looking to glean out value. And we come across the value when their name is just sitting there in our draft queues. We're like, oh, he's still there. And then you start hoping, well, this is where we need to make sure that with the value, we're putting the guys in the queue and drafting me at the appropriate positions. And that's where you can get the guys, like we said, on our big draft board. Mally, the 10 guys, I'll take us through the first five, mate. You've got Kevin Duran on your list, James Harden, Jared Allen, Fred Van Vliet, and Jalen Johnson, all currently outranked where and exceeding their ADPs, not only on our draft boards, but many across. And our last five, mate, do you like take us through these blokes? So we've got uh, Josh Giddy, uh, Zubark, Al Horford. We've got Isaiah Hartenstein. We seem to have missed our friend uh, Kaminga uh, mm. in amongst the mix. Do we have time to talk about him or are we closing oh, up we do. for the night? Jeez, we did. We, uh, you know what? No, we do because I was all on the bloody center train. I was like, two, 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 two centers. Yeah, yeah, Jonathan Kaminga is too much to roll. Yeah, let's have a little chat about him. Look, to keep like brief, him. last year finished 164th. ESPN have him at uh, 136. We have him uh, somewhere around the hundreds, so a few before, a few after. I think at last look, we had him about 98. Um, fan tracks have him at 116. Yahoo 112. Uh, hashtag basketball 120. So we're probably a little higher on him than most. Um, but there's a fog of war, obviously, around Golden State at the moment. We don't know. They've got, ironically, they've lost Clay Thompson and now it's even more confusing about what's going to happen with their starting lineup and even with their with their bench rotation. Um, at the end of the day, they need someone who's going to be an aggressive scorer and Curry can't play every minute of the game. So here they're going to need someone else who can do that. Um, we saw what happened last year when Jonathan Kaminga uh, put it to Kerr that he deserved more time and yep. uh, a bigger role. And Kerr said, all right, have a go with that. And he did really well. Um, yep. And I think if I can get him anywhere past 100, let alone 136, I'd be very, <laughs> um, very happy with myself. And yeah. I think 136 this year has to be his floor, realistically. Yep. Like he's, he's beaten well, 164, hands down. 136 yep. seems to be absolute safety. And if you can get him at 100, I'd even say you're picking up value there. And he finished, as you said, in the last three months of last season, even with an inconsistent role at times, he finished as the 104th ranked player. So this is a guy who just basically where we're suggesting you take him, this was his optimal value last with Clay Thompson on the team. He showed a lot of explosiveness. He attacks the cup. Like he loves, this is a guy who loves to get to the free throw line. Um, Field goal percentage at 540 last year. If he can get that free throw percentage over 800, he shoots up spots, spots as well. He was under, in that last three months, a steal a game. If he can get it up to one steal a game um, and continue the rebounding up around six, it was about 5.5 at peak last year during that stretch. Keep the assist at the three that they were. This was a guy who was scoring 18 points a game in that stretch as well. If he makes a couple more buckets, this is a plus 20 point scorer around pick 100 with a decent field goal percentage. Guess what? They don't really exist because around that time, you've got Cam Thomas, who's been evaporated in drafts. Any value of him around 100 is gone. He is now moving into the 70s uber quick. I mean, Dennis Schroeder's around there. Mm -hmm. Don't feel comfortable with it. Jordan Poole's around there. Well, you all know what that experiment was last year. How Jalen Green, these are the 20 point scorers that exist. And we all know that the Jalen Green's at 35. <laughs> bloody ESPN uh, you and your ESPN <laughs> daddy don't like but this is where Jonathan Kaminga at a 20 point per game score around pick 100 becomes an incredibly valuable asset so we absolutely like what he can do and he almost rounded them out there Mally with as we said Isaiah Hartenstein which is the mountain that I'm on 
Yeah, and I, I think just the last the last comment on him is we've got to remember as well he's starting this season at 21 years old. Like, I think this is the guy's fourth season. What the yeah. hell was when he started the NBA? It must have been about 17. Six. I mean, my math is probably Six, a little off. Yeah, mine's pump. off too. But he was an absolute pup, and I think that's where I think that's where that young ego comes into it. He's like he's gone through it. He's he was one of these upside picks. He's been in trade rumors for a while. We all know that Steve Kerr likes to play his veterans in his team. And it just feels now that the organization is in this state of like, okay, well, we, we've got to roll the dice. We, we've got to, that we all know that they were hunting for Paul George in the offseason. It didn't happen. But he is also the piece that every other team seems to be salivating over. The front office says, you can get your hands off our cum bucket. You can't have him. Mm-hmm. He's saying, just play me. And Kerr's like, eh. Yeah, I'm not going to play Jason Tatum as part of the Olympic team. Not going to really play Jonathan Kaminga that much. So there's just this organizational hesitancy, but I think the impetus is that he plays more. He needs to play more. And this is where we're going to see a return of value for him this year. But he, again, he is going to be one of these sleepy picks that we all start picking up in drafts. And you're going to start to see his ADP come in and shift around possibly into the 80s. And when that day has come, well, maybe that's his ceiling. Maybe his ceiling's a top 50 guy. Great. But you're not going to ever reach for Jonathan Kaminga inside the top 60. Not going to need to. Not going to need to. Again, as we said, heaps of content coming away. We're going to have a Jalen battle, Matty. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And make sure you do it. You like and subscribe to all of the things as well on Inside. Don't forget the big draft board is coming. Round two of our passes of where guys fall. It's on the way. Like and subscribe to all things Insight. We'll see you soon. Cheerio, Matty. Bye.